Greetings, pen pals. I have a pen here from Waterman today with a very long name. This is the Waterman Le Mans Opera 100. This is not a new pen. It's from a few decades ago. Um, and it's really designed to be a throwback to vintage Waterman pens as well as incorporating elements of modern Waterman pens. They came out with this line of pens to commemorate their 100th anniversary. So this was uh, a while ago. Uh, they do not make this pen anymore. You can get one obviously on the secondary market. Uh, not a cheap pen by any means, um, but it's a super, super nice pen. And um, as we go through it, uh, you'll see why I like it so much. So the thing that first jumps right out at me is the uh, chasing on the barrel. So what this is, is it's a primarily a metal pen. So it's got some weight to it. It weighs 35 grams. So we're talking about a pretty hefty, hefty pen here. It's also a pretty nicely sized pen. Here it is. We'll line it up with the Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. And as you can see, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit uh, bigger than, uh, than, both of, uh, than both of these guys. Um, and it's got a little bit of girth to it, not particularly girthy, uh, um, a girthy pen. Um, but it definitely, like I said, definitely has weight. It doesn't feel like an all acrylic pen because what you're dealing with is a brass, in all likelihood, body with the acrylic um, on top of it. Um, so then, then what you have here in the acrylic is a chasing pattern that's virtually identical to the chasing pattern on vintage Waterman pens. So this is a Waterman Model 55. It's about 100 years old, maybe a little more even. And uh, the chasing on that one has obviously had a lot of wear to it, but you could probably see how we're talking about the same pattern in the chasing. Now the material is very different. The vintage pen is made out of black uh, chased hard rubber while this is acrylic on top of brass. We're talking about a very, very different material, but you can see um, how uh, they did definitely did a throwback by incorporating vintage Waterman pen chasing pattern in the modern pen, which is really super, super nice. I love, love the looks of this pen. Um, there's awful lot of trim on this pen. So starting from the bottom, we have a tapered part of uh, the barrel. This is to accommodate posting. Um, and then um, you have two trim rings here. You have a long chased section of the barrel, which tapers up a bit. You have a cap, a double cap band, and on the cap band it says Waterman made in France. You then have a clip ring with the clip. The clip is a very, very modern clip, um, sort of for the, the, from modern Waterman pens and Waterman pens of the few decades ago when this was made. It's a very, very functional clip pretty springy actually, um, um, but it's definitely a modern, uh, modern looking clip. Um, and then it terminates in the cap with a um, logo, which is sort of the modern Waterman logo, just sort of kind of printed on this disc. This to me is the design wise is the weak spot on this pen. Um, I'm I personally, I think the modern Waterman logo, which is that W is sort of one of the lazier logos around there. Now when the old days, Waterman used to use the Ideal Globe logo. You can actually see it in several places on this vintage pen. It's on the clip here. It's also on the filler lever, love, filler level. I'm having a hard time talking today. It's also on the filler lever uh, on, uh, on this pen, uh, here, right there. And they actually even have it on this pen on the nibs. So I'll show you real quick there. You could see the ideal globe logo there. Now, what I thought would have been really killer on this pen was instead of that W, if they had the, I and since, especially since you're dealing with a round surface here, you could have done the ideal globe logo in relief that would have just been super, super. If you didn't want to do that, then you should have done this W logo in some sort of relief. The way it was done here, I think, is just kind of a little bit cheap. This is a uh, pull to uncap, actually, uh, surprisingly uh, surprisingly a bit, uh, as a pull to uncap. The pen is, is really plenty long, unposted. I really do like to post. It snaps on to post. It's pretty long, pretty heavy and back weighted posted, but I really am a diehard poster, so I definitely would be posting this pen. Most people probably would not want to. The sec there's a, a trim ring here, 
a nice uh, long tapered section with a big big piece of uh, metal trim at the end of the section here so this is a very comfortable pen to um, to hold you have a lot of different places within the section you can hold it depending upon your 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 likes etc um, now we get to the nib which is really the star of this pen so this is an 18 karat gold gorgeous two-toned nib the size i would say is a six and change and the reason i'd say a six and change it's basically a number six size nib but the shoulders are very very broad so it's you know the diameter of the nib is clearly a number six but here it is compared to a number six jinhao nib and you can see just how the shoulders are, are quite a bit broader on this one than on this one so it just gives it a much more substantial uh look but this so this is a big big nib now given that it's not a huge pen it's a very normal size pen the nib just looks nice and substantial and massive and impressive looking in this pen it's really really nice it's like gorgeous 18 karat gold two-tone nib it's got the id waterman ideal globe logo it says ideal waterman 18k 750 and paris it just looks spectacular uh and it has an uninspiring uh plastic feed but the feed does have the m4 medium on the back of the nib on the back of the feed like uh, waterman uh, tends to do put the size on the feeds rather than on the nibs themselves um then um the pen is is um cartridge converter filled um it has a nice o-ring there and tons of brass and metal inside so you can see this is really substantial and the o-ring there is really it's not meant for eye dropping obviously with all the metal here that o-ring is really just to give you kind of a nice cushiony uh definitive seal when you're closing this so it feels really good um when you uh when you close it um but to me the real the real superstar on this pen is the nib and the chasing um just really really special looking um and and really really a great great looking um uh, uh, uh nib uh, great looking pen great looking nib it uh etc so again really really uh, a nice pen from waterman from a few decades ago um and um uh, you know this is definitely a a a nice um throwback pen uh they did a really good job like i said combining the elements of their uh, pens from 100 years ago uh to sort of something uh, much more contemporary so i think they really did a super super job um uh, super super job on on this one but as we always say pens were meant to write and of course you want to see this pen write, and i'm going to show you that right now so what we're writing with here today is a Waterman. Le Mans. Opera 100. And this has an 18 karat medium nib. And this really, really writes well. So this is this is smooth. Um, it really has some nice flow. Um, I would say, from a wetness perspective, it's about average. Really, really, kind of just in that sweet spot of uh, not too wet, not too dry, just right. Um, um, really, really, really uh, writes well. Um, it's a very reliable writer as well, so you uncap this and it just, just writes. Uh, if you have it sitting for a few days, it doesn't matter. Really reliable, nice flowing, um, uh, nice flowing uh, writing uh, pen. In terms of reverse writing, it actually, it's a bit scratchy, but it does work. And I would guess that takes it down to an extra fine um if you to do uh reverse writing but um it uh this is just a beautiful beautiful pen this might be one of my favorite watermans uh uh of all um uh in terms of both looks and writing etc they really really did a nice job like i said my only complaint 
is really I just don't like what they did with that Waterman logo on the end of the cap. I'm just I just don't think that's worthy of the rest of the pen. And it, to me, it was just a, such a perfect place to put the Ideal Globe uh, logo. That would have just been super. But that's my only quibble. But they certainly did it nice and prominently on the nib with that Ideal Globe logo. So they definitely came through with that. So that really looks great. Um, so. That's about uh, all I have to say about this Waterman um, Le Mans uh, Opera 100. But let's talk about this ink now for a minute now, shall we? Okay, this is a really, really pretty ink from Ackerman. This is one of my favorite pens, and it's definitely got one of my favorite inks in it. So this is Ackerman. Delft Blau. That's B-L-A-U-W. It's kind of hard to see the U and the W joined up there. B-L-A-U-W. Um, now, Delft's Blau from Ackerman. Um, let's, uh, this is, uh, as with a lot of Ackerman inks, the packaging is actually quite special on this. So before we go into too much detail on the ink itself, let's look at the packaging. Okay, so it comes in this really, really nice box. Um, a lot of the Ackerman inks, they just use the same generic box regardless of the color of the ink. This is one of the few where they have a special box for the ink, for this Delft's Blau. So it, this is in reference to uh, the motif and the color of the ink and the motif on the box is in reference to Delft, China. So the, the, the city of Delft in the Netherlands is very famous for their China, in particular in this blue color in very specific patterns. It's very, very recognizable. You This probably looks familiar to you, this shade of blue and these patterns, etc., just by looking at it. So the box and the bottle are meant to to echo the theme of, uh, of that. So that's um, that's where that comes from. If we take the ink out of the box. You'll see, if you're not familiar with this, the very typical uh, 60 milliliter um, Ackerman uh, flask type bottle. So again, it has uh, nice decorations uh, appropriate to the Delft China theme. Um, the way these bottles work is there's this pinched part of the neck. There's actually a marble trapped in this upper section. So what you do is you tilt the bottle, you basically fill up this upper section, you then turn it upright and the ink will be filled, regardless of how little ink may be in here, what you'll end up doing is filling this upper part, which provides a nice ink well to fill your pen. This is nice and wide up at the top, so you can pretty much fit any reasonable sized or even unreasonably sized pen in there. So these are great bottles, definitely win the Cool Bottle Award. They make this in a couple of different sizes, the 60 milliliter, there's also 120 milliliter size uh, for, for certain inks uh, from Ackerman. As um, as well, so this is sort of the the cool factor with uh, with Ackerman inks is this really great great bottle. Okay, getting back to the ink itself. So like I said, so we're dealing with Ackerman Delft's Blau. So this is just a super super nice, somewhat standard blue. It's a little bit on the light side, but I really like it. It's if you like like a Rochezuka Konpeki or something like that, you're gonna like uh, this this ink. This doesn't have much of that sort of reddish cast that that uh, reddish uh, um, uh, shading that that ink has, but this shades uh, in its own in various uh, 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 shades of blue. So you do get uh, that kind of color variation um, uh, there. So it, it's just a really, really pretty uh, ink, dare I say a somewhat basic blue, but it just uh, really, 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 really is a nice nice color um, um, and again uh, for a special pen like this I, I think this is a great great ink for uh, this uh, for this pen so that's what this ink looks like on this Rhodia paper let's take a quick uh, look at what this ink looks like on Tomoe River paper okay like we said what we have here is Ackerman Delts Blau. And um, as you can see, on you get you definitely pick up a bit more of the shading that this ink does 
uh, on the Tamoe River paper, but again, we're just dealing with a super, super pretty ink. Um, great shade. It has the combination, of, it's a light ink, but yet there's a certain vibrancy associated with it. Um, so again, just a very nice uh, 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 ink, and uh, I'm a big, big, uh, big fan of this one. Um, anyway, I think that will just about do it. Oh, before I leave you, do not forget to please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That would be very much appreciated if you were to do all those things. And until we see each other again, please have a great day. And as always, bye-bye.